Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tani Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. Hello, everyone. Super excited to be back talking to my friend Tani Ray and all of you about this 2019 movie called Swallow. Uh, so we are talking about the movie. I had Googled and saw that there was a series, I think on Netflix, but I could be wrong. And M. Night Shalaman is involved. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And actually this director had... Nope. I'm going to take that back. Ignore everything I just said. Not everything, just the part about the director, but everything else is true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but before we get into it, uh, Tani, what are you drinking? So I'm drinking an athletic brewing upside Dawn drink beer. These are those non-alcoholic beers. They're super good. Yeah. What are you drinking? I am drinking the same darn thing. Are you? Yeah. Nice. Well, it's really in my cozy koozie, whatever. Athletic Brewing, Upside Dawn. They are really good. I like them because it feels like I'm drinking, but then like I don't, yeah. I don't know. But you're not. But I'm <laughs> not, exactly. <laughs> We've tried, Um, I've tried, Jade has tried two other ones now, and I've only tried one because they have an IPA and a hazy IPA in our store that we buy them at. And mm-hmm. I tried the hazy IPA and it tastes like a fucking IPA. It's like crazy that they can get the same taste almost without alcohol and, you know, remove, removing gluten, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, the only I've, well, I used, I tried it several back, back in the day, back in the day when I was young, that song, every time I say back in the day, that goes to my head. But, um, uh, recently well-being they're, they're a little bit taller, like longer silver bottles. Well, being oh, yeah. is a good one too. It's very hoppy. I like that. Steve doesn't like hoppy, but those are good ones as well. You yeah, don't like not hoppy a hop- either. Yeah, it's not really for me. I can do some IPAs if they are like, um, if they feel like bright and fresh and kind of like, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of why I like those hazy IPAs because it almost is like a wheat beer kind of, um, or if it's like fruity. Mm-hmm. But in general, I'm not an IPA fan or hop, hoppy beer fan. I know Lagunitas has a non-alcoholic and I really like their regular alcoholic beer. So I wanted to try that as well. Mm. I'll let you know. Yeah. What you've been watching, reading, listening to? Well, um, not much. Mostly just Elden Ring taking over my life still. It's good. Good. Uh, <laughs> consistency I, right yes <laughs> i did read um the viscount who loved me in preparation for the new season of bridgerton who am i as a person i don't know you're the best person i love it <laughs> death um, love romance <laughs> my, yeah Fear. the whole gamut yes <laughs> <laughs> um and then we watched that adam the adam project last night the one with um Ooh. Ryan Reynolds. It was pretty fun. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. It was, it was fun like funny. spooky. Oh, it's funny. It's a funny thing. Yeah. Definitely like a comedy, like kind of an action comedy thing. I saw online somebody said that it reminded them of Amblin, Amblin movies, um, like Steven Spielberg movies from the 90s. And I, I definitely got that vibe. So it was fun. I recommend it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Those are my only things to report. So the only two things I have to report is that just reminded me of it. Actually, we did watch Free Guy, which is also oh, with yeah. Ryan Reynolds. That was fun. It was cute. It's cute and fun. All right. Yeah. Cute and fun. What, yeah, Ryan Reynolds, he's everywhere these days. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, and we watched me and my husband, which I was surprised because, you know, he isn't usually into true crime but we watched on netflix the worst roommate ever oh yeah and i've seen the preview for this yeah it's t- four different stories i think there's only four episodes about 
the worst roommate ever. And so I don't even want to give anything away, but they're different stories. Um, and so they, they were really fascinating and just started the thing about Pam. I believe that's on Hulu and it has Renee Zellweger. And it's also a, uh, it's like a dark comedy, I would say about a true crime that happened where I believe the woman killed her best friend. And so, but it, it is like, um, yeah, it's like, I guess a, a dark comedy is what I would say. It's because mm. of the acting and the stuff and they like satire, maybe if that's the right word. Mm. But, um, so far, it is, it is interesting. Like Steve and I are interested. We want to keep going. Okay. That's all I got to say about it. All right. Other than that, I'm doing my yoga teacher training and I'm going to have it done by the end of the month. So I have been nice deep in <laughs> reading and studying till my eyes burn out. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of coursework. I'm sure. That's it. I did remember as you were talking, we did start watching Inventing Anna, which <gasps> oh, okay, okay. I wasn't like stoked about like I, it didn't look super interesting to me. And I was like not excited to watch it because, again, I'm still in this mode where I'm like, I don't want to watch anything like dark or sinister. Like I'm kind of over the thriller, you know what I mean, thing. But it actually is different than I thought it was going to be. And it's more wholesome. And funnier than I thought it was going to be. And so I am enjoying that much more than I thought I was going to. Oh, good. Yeah, it has a different vibe. It's definitely not a thriller at all. Um, yeah, it, it, I thought it, it was. I, go ahead. I just got the wrong vibe. I just thought it was going to be like real serious about this woman who swindled a bunch of people, you know? Oh, but yeah, gotcha. Not, it's not that. No, it's not. It, and it's. Uh, what I found really fascinating, and I will not give anything away, but I found really fascinating is everybody I talked to so far is like, yes, what she did was wrong, but mad respect for the for the confidence <laughs> and the just like, I don't know, it's hard not to be like, damn, girl, kind of wish, you know, I could just even like yeah. a little bit of that confidence, not necessarily do fraudulent activity, but I mean, I don't yeah. know, something. Just, yeah, yeah. I got real, I got so into it and I got Seth from horror movie crew into it. Okay. And so, yeah, we were going back and forth and, um, I would like, I followed her social accounts, like, cause I love when things connect with real life. So within that, whenever there's like selfies being taken, the selfie is on, there's like a, the, the original version of that. That's why they make such a big deal about it. Cause you can find it within there. And it's just, it's curious. I loved it. It was a fun ride for me. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to you after I finish it because yes, I don't want anything spoiled. <laughs> All right. Anything else we want to share? That's it for me. Me too. All right. Let's talk. Okay. So we are talking about Swallow, and it is classified as a horror drama or psychological psychological thriller. Um, we'll talk about that later because I have some things to say. Um, let's see. I watched it on Amazon Prime with the IFC, like free seven days. You could also do it with Amazon or I'm sorry, AMC subscription. If you want to watch it for free, the director was Carlo Mirabella Davis. He has also um, directed Knife Point, The Swell Season and an episode of Servant. And so everything I said about Swallow in the beginning, the TV um, uh, the TV series, just ignore it because it was <laughs> servant that M okay. night Shalaman was the one. It just <laughs> came to me when I'm reading my notes. Servant was the one that M night also, um, I believe directed four episodes and, and so did Marabella Davis, but I haven't seen any of these things. Okay. Uh, it was really hard to find a budget, honestly, but I did find a box office, which was 274,000. $259, um, which is really teensy weensy, but yeah. 
something I found really interesting was um, this movie tied for the highest grossing film in the U.S. for the week of April 17th, 2020 because of COVID. Oh, so okay. It, yeah, it earned $2,490 in a handful of drive-in um, theaters during COVID. And so... Um, with a total of 31,646 in its seven week run, but because of COVID. Okay. So, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 88%, IMDb 6.5, and Letterbox 3.5. 3.5 out of 10, IMDb 6.5 out of 10. Wow. The cast- that's, a, that's quite a range there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get into that. Uh, we'll get into that. I'm excited. Haley Bennett played Hunter, our leading, leading lady. Elizabeth Marvel was Catherine, Catherine Conrad, who was the mother-in-law, mother-in-law. Austin Stowell was Richie Conrad, the narcissistic bastard husband. Dennis (laughs) O'Hare was Irwin, uh, the Hunter's birth father. Uh, Laith Knockley was Louie. So he was like the living nurse. And mm-hmm. then David Rash was Michael Conrad, <laughs> the bastard narcissistic husband's father. Okay. He's probably another bastard narcissistic. I'm just <laughs> right, kidding. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's all I got. So two minutes with Tawny. Can I just tell you that I watched 75% of this movie before I realized that I was not looking at Jennifer Lawrence? <laughs> I was like, I, I I paused it or something to get up, and I was like, "What? Who's that?" I was like, "That's not her." I was like, "This Jennifer." I had to look up a picture, side by side. They do look incredibly similar. Like when you're looking at them next to to each other, you're like, "Okay, I can see there's a tiny bit of a difference," but holy shit, they could be twins almost. I also thought Jennifer Lawrence was in this movie. <laughs> okay. I'm glad. I was like, yes. shit. I think I've been saying that for a long time, too. Anytime somebody brings up this movie, I'm like, that one with Jennifer Lawrence? No. And probably everyone Stop. goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. So here we go. Two minutes with Tani. Turn back now if you don't want this spoiled for you. When Hunter finds out she is pregnant, she starts swallowing objects, starting with a marble and then moving on to attack. At an ultrasound appointment, the tech realizes something is in her digestive tract and emergency surgery is performed to remove several objects from her stomach, like a battery, safety pin, and a paperclip. She begins therapy and her husband and his family begin to hover over her, even hiring a live-in nurse named Lue to watch her to make sure she doesn't swallow anything again. It comes to light that swallowing objects makes Hunter feel in control. Richie, her husband, becomes increasingly terrible. He does not understand her at all and even yells or even tells everyone he works with about her Pika, is it Pika? Pika diagnosis. In therapy, she reveals that her mother was raped by a man named William and gave birth to her due to not believing in abortion. Later, Hunter overhears the therapist telling her husband about this because he is paying her to relay anything she says to him. In therapy. She has a panic attack and tries to swallow a long nail, but ends up choking on it. Louie finds her and calls 911, and she has another emergency surgery. This time, Richie's family forces her... This time, Richie's family force her to go into a psychiatric hospital. While packing, Louie helps her escape, and she runs away to a motel. She calls Richie to explain that she has feelings for him, but that she rushed into things with him to make him happy, including the baby. He threatens to hunt her down if she doesn't come back. She destroys her phone and finds her biological father to confront him. He admits that he is ashamed of raping her mother, but isn't ashamed of her. When Hunter asks if she is like him, he initially says he doesn't know, but after she asks him to say it, he tells her she is not like him. Hunter gets a prescription for an abortion, which she has in a mall bathroom stall. She smiles at herself and exits the bathroom. The end. End scene. Yeah. Excellent. All right. What did you think about this movie? I ended up really liking this, actually. I thought I thought this was going to be way different than it was. I thought it was going to be weird for some reason. Like, I thought we were going into... I, I kind of thought we were going to have Teton, like 
not as not as weird, maybe. But I thought we were going into like an art house, you know, body horror, thrillery type of I don't know something. And it, I feel like it starts out with that vibe a little bit, and then after like thirty minutes into the movie, it completely changes gears and becomes just a drama, like. But I ended up really liking it, and I just didn't think I would like it because it's all about mental health and being in control of your own body and destiny. And yeah, I just like, I thought it was the more, and I just watched it this morning. So I, I should have watched it earlier to give myself like more time to sit with it. But I just, and then I recounted the whole movie to Jade and I was like, this is good. I liked it a lot. So that's where <laughs> I landed. <laughs> How did you feel? I feel the same way. I really like this movie. Um, if I was to rate it as a horror movie, I it would be di- totally different. I think for me, it was absolutely not a horror or a psychological thriller. It felt like a pure drama. So yeah. it definitely started off with hacking up the, you know, the goat and then the stuff she was swallowing, but it just felt like a drama. And something I think is really interesting about this movie is how it hit people different ways. Like I read a lot of stuff where people were saying um, that the director didn't put any empathy or compassion towards people that have this type of disorder or in this situation. It was purely just cringy, like cringy, gross stuff, you know, for effect. And I had the complete different response to it. Like I, and a lot of people, you know, also, I felt there was like really great compassion and empathy and kind of displaying what this woman was feeling and going through and and the struggle she was having. So there's, there's lots of people who are like, oh yeah, it was so gross focused on the stuff she was swallowing. But then there's this whole other side of it. That's so much deeper than the stuff she's swallowing. They didn't even really get, you can get all, you know, cringy when you see what she swallows, but they don't even really do that much. Yeah. You know, it's not gory at all, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like I was worried. <laughs> I was worried. We got like 20 minutes in after the tack and I was mm. like, please, God, I was like, oh, no, we are in for it. This movie is going to be it's so uncomfortable to watch. I'm so the moment she set that marble down after she ate it, passed yeah. it, washed it. OK, I forgot to mention all that in my recap, <laughs> 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 but she goes to set it down, you know, in her new collection of things that she has swallowed and as soon as she said that thing down on i was like oh no this is gonna be fucking bad i i don't know if i can handle this like this is gonna be so uncomfortable but it really changes gears and you don't get a lot of that after again the first like i felt like there was definitely parallels and i'm not gonna say anything you know because i don't want to ruin titan but i felt like there was some parallels in terms of how the movie starts and then like changes gears at almost yeah. the same like pace and it becomes this like kind of different, deeper story. Because yeah. at first I didn't like, I was like, who is this lady? Like, I don't, you know, but by the end of the movie, you really feel for her and you come to know her and why she is the way she is. And I I also agree that I did not feel that it was portrayed in like a gross light. I felt like there was a lot of, I mean, I don't have pica myself, so maybe I'm not a good judge, but I do have like, you know, a similar thing. Like I have a compulsion to pull out my hair and I've had that like my whole life. And so I think there is, you know, there's similarities when you have that like compulsive behavior. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was illustrated. Well, I liked it. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And I'm really glad you brought that up because some of the stuff I was reading, um, there, well, there's a couple of things I want to bring up, but one, based off what you were just saying, there were people that have pica, uh, saying that it does, it's not, it's not displaying accurately what it is and that it's just trying to, you know, make, uh, us look crazy or get like gore, ew, cringy stuff, you know, out of this particular, you know, uh, disorder, but what on one hand, um, just like you mentioned with the hair, and I've suffered from depression, 
we we can have we can share and for like say a bunch uh, for all the people that have su- uh, suffered from depression as well there's like maybe some things that are shared lived experiences right and that's how you get symptoms that list of symptoms you google there's also very different lived experiences with people with these disorders so we might all have the same disorder um but it might just it might um manifest differently within our lives right so it could be all different and also i i wondered if there's also a play on our healthcare system and the sense that she's pregnant and she's swallowing things. It's pica. But what we learn deeper and, you know, she's making her iron shakes and all of that, but we learn deeper down the road. No, there is so much more. She's struggling with her identity being, um, you know, is she she evil? Like her father, who is a rapist, her family obviously didn't fully accept her, even though they, the mom didn't have an abortion. The family still saw her as the baby from the rape, the rape experience. There's so much more her domestic situation. So maybe ultimately it wasn't even like pica. So I want to say one last thing. I'll be quiet. When I stopped, um, when I was done with the movie, I cried. I think it resonated me on a real deep level because I, or like awoke a lot of old stuff within my body that my body's holding on to, because I saw it a lot as a self-harm sort of yeah. thing as what well, as well yeah. right because she's got to know that that's harmful but there's still this compulsion to do it yes so yeah. i don't know i thought it was again i have not had pica but i just think that the mental illness and the compulsion and the depression and the loneliness i just thought it was displayed yeah. really beautifully no i agree and i picked up on that too it did feel like it was you know maybe this isn't even pica maybe this is you know, self-harm. I mean, no matter how you look at it, basically she's doing it to regain control over her life. And I mm-hmm. agree that throughout the movie, I, I, with the exception of the therapist, everybody is sort of just obsessed with getting her to stop doing it. Like that's the only focus is like, stop doing it. But there's no yeah. focus on why is she doing it to begin with? And like, I do think that is a, cri- a criticism of our healthcare system in the way that we just treat symptoms, not the root cause. Right. And yeah. So I think that's an interesting theme as well. Yeah. Cause yeah, the, the psychiatrist, she did say, yeah, I'll give you the medication, but it also helps to talk. No one was concerned with that. They're like, just get her to stop doing this. It's too much pressure on poor Richie to have his wife yeah. swallowing shit and going to the hospital and embarrassing him in front of his father. He can't Best. deal with this right now. <laughs> can't deal with this right now. Exactly. Another thing I wanted to mention about what I just said about, um, I saw a review of, of somebody who was mad that, that he was exploiting people with pica. Here's the thing about horror stories, (laughs) storytelling, like writing a horror story 101, where do you get your ideas? You get your ideas from things that really scare people, right? Yeah. Whether it's folklore, old folklore, and a, a big, big topic would be mental illness because that terrifies people to lose control of their mind, right? So you think of like a, the woman in the window, she was agoraphobic. So you would take agoraphobia, that's something that people um, suffer from, and you expand it into this story and this world. That's what horror movies are yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) taking something that's scary and then expanding it into something more and i don't even think he did more he could have really this was like a a horror movie Oof. i was scared like i said i was scared i was like what are what am i gonna see on this tray i i'm so i don't even want to see it on the tray even if we don't see it happen, I'm so scared to see what this woman puts in her body. I like, this is something that legitimately unnerved me, you know, especially in the beginning where you're like, Oh my God, what is she going to, because I am just a health anxiety person. And so the idea of swallowing something that could like tear you up from the inside out is fucking awful for me. So I was like, yes. just so scared. I was like, is this bitch going to swallow glass? What is she? Like, I, I went down the path. I was like, I was doing worst case scenarios. I was like, oh no, she's going to eat glass. And when her like mother-in-law was chopping shit, 
straight up. This is my horror brain. This is me like I'm primed for worst case scenario. What kind of like horrific body horror shit am I about to see? I thought legitimately that she was going to chop off the tip of a finger and that bitch was going to swallow it. That's what I thought. So it could have been way fucking worse. It could have been way worse. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) She was chopping it so like loud and intently. I was like, oh, no. Like the first 30 minutes of this movie gave me so much fucking anxiety. And this is the part that I feel like you could maybe say is close to horror because this this part of the movie made me so fucking unnerved and scared. And I was so nervous. There was so much tension, you know? I'm like, like, where's it going to go? Yeah. I was like, oh, God, please. But they saved me. I was glad for it. (laughs) Yeah. they When they showed that whole uh, tray of stuff that, you know, she swallowed and passed because that's where she puts the stuff. And that there was like a a, quite a large statue of a woman. Yeah. (laughs) My God. I was like. Oh God! I mean, I'm Oof. glad that it you passed it. That's oof. And then when she swallowed the very final thing, that big, like nail, it was a nail, right, or yeah. some type of a little, yeah, or maybe a screwdriver or something. It was something. It really looked like a tiny long. mini screwdriver nail or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a screwdriver actually. That. Oh, I said nail, but yeah, it's probably like a little eyeglass screwdriver or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like, but it was long and it did not look like it would go down at all. I don't even know how it would go down. I don't know how. Yeah, she thought it would either, but it definitely didn't. So and maybe that was the thing. Maybe she wasn't even really looking for it to go down, you know, for the yeah, because it seemed to escalate even more. Um when there was a baby growing inside of her. Cause if you think about it, she feels trapped in this marriage and she's trying her best. And that family has such power over their son and over this whole relationship. When she has a baby, Oh my gosh. Even if she decides to leave him, I mean, she, they're going to fight for custody. They're like, this yeah. is, this is a whole, Oh, that terror of finding out that she's pregnant. And now this is like, yeah. Deeply um, forever. Real quick, I'll, the other thing that I just want to say before I forget. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was going to happen. <laughs> this is awful. Again, I don't know. If my, my brain just goes to like the worst case scenario. And I thought for some reason this movie was going to be just so fucking bizarre. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought that. But when she squeezes out that like there's like peanut butter sauce or something that she squeezes out in the beginning of the movie, like on a plate. Yep. I was like, oh, no, that's foreshadowing. And she's going to eat shit later in this movie <laughs> I'm so glad she didn't <laughs> me too so then when she gets the gloves and she goes to like pick up her oh poop, no i was like oh no oh god here we go i was like i fucking i i made a no so i could tell you i fucking called it thank god she didn't that wasn't what happened she does not god. eat any poop i'm this. just saying you could have had her eat a lot more gross stuff like yeah because there has been um cases i think some of the i have here um that pica is an eating disorder in which people compulsively eat non nutritional substances or nutritive um but like ice dirt paint chips and clay but i've also seen they said glass hair feces things like that so they yeah. could have gone she ate, you know, some uncomfortable items and some paper. So, right. <laughs> Listen to this. There is, if you Wikipedia Pika, there's a picture of just stuff, not a, yeah. Um, a stomach, the stomach contents of a psychiatric patient with Pika. 1,400 items, including 453 nails. 42 screws, safety pins, spoon tops, salt and pepper shaker tops. How? I don't know. Just a picture. It's like this picture of all of this stuff. Well, I just mean like how. How would they eat that much stuff? Yeah. I did research more. Yeah, it's got 1,400 items. I mean. Jesus, I'm going to go look at this picture. 
look at it. It's on the Wikipedia for pica. Hmm. And I'll, and I'll put it in the, I ha, I do have the link so I could put it in our discord, but yeah. So, um, I think that that, you know, the doctor was saying, oh, this is what it is. And so it does, uh, it is an emotional disorder. So for stress, trauma, maternal dip, deprivation, they see it a lot in pregnant, um, people or children with disabilities that they have low iron. So that's why she was making that shake full of iron. But yeah. more recently they have found it to be tied also or cases to obsessive compulsive spectrums. Mm. That would so. make sense too. Cause it's like there, the, yeah, there's like a compulsion to do something mm -hmm. and you don't feel like good until you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, self-harm has the same sort of thing, you know, and you do it and then there's a relaxation uh, afterwards, but it's only temporary, right? Because then she has mm -hmm. to keep going, keep going. In. Interesting. I thought the the movie was beautiful. The first thing, like visually, visually stunning. And I just want to mention, this is my last, there was really everything else um, I researched about Pika because there was one tidbit. There was one Oh, I actually didn't even write the trivia that was from the IMDb because it was like as a disorder. Um, but so I read some other stuff and the director attributes the selection of the home to its Hitchcock like appearance. He also has compared the homes nearby river. So that's the Hudson River and that's New York to a mood ring representing freedom, power and danger a stark contrast to the powerless life that the protagonist hunter finds herself living in. Hmm. Interesting. It is a very, um, weird house. And like the, the mm. movie itself has kind of a weird vibe. I think it's interesting that we're watching this before we watch it follows. Cause I think it follows is going to have some similar vibes. This movie had like, like a 50s, 60s-ish sort of like mid-century modern vibe, even though it's obviously not set in that time, it's present day. But I mean, she looks like she's like straight out of the 50s, just with her like outfits and the way that her hair is and all of that. Like it does seem to be very intentional. And so it has that, f you know, feeling all the way through the movie. And the house is very unique and weird and lots of colors, very colorful. Yeah. Yeah. I read something where they mentioned kind of like a Mad Men for anyone who's seen Mad Men mm, type yeah. feel. Um, and probably as well, like all of that stuff happens these days, but I think, it's, uh, of course, of course that stuff happens these days, but I think especially it kind of just perpetuated that more with how she was the subservient wife that takes care of the home that does this and he goes out and he works and is a prick. <laughs> 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 I really liked Lue. Me too. I thought that that connection that they developed was really beautiful. And he like, he really felt for her and could see that she was trapped. I liked that. I did too. There was like very little dialogue between the two of them, but I liked the story and I liked his, you know, conversation with her in the beginning where he's like, I came from a war torn country basically. And like, People there don't have to worry about like, what did he see? Like mind problems. Like, yep. Mind, mind problems. problems. Um, Cause they're too busy dealing with war basically, which I think is like a, um, I think this is a, you know, can be a common misconception, I guess, or like thought about mental illness is like, oh, you're just like so bored. You don't have anything, any kind of problems or anything to worry about. So now you're like making up your own problems which is just not true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. it's like, I, it's like, okay, sure. I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure people in war torn countries also deal with mental illness also. So, yes. but you yeah. see how he comes around, you know, like he starts to realize just by watching her that she is sad and lonely and he has empathy for her. Like I was, I was not sure about it in the beginning. I was like, this guy straight up looks like a hitman. I was like, who is this <laughs> yeah, guy? <he> does. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what is he doing here? But then he ended up being like, and I think they even said like, oh yeah, he took care of Mima or whatever. And they're like, oh, he's very uh, empathetic. 
which was ultimately like their downfall because he was empathetic towards her. Yeah. So yeah, when he helped her escape, that was, that was great. I loved, I do have to say, I loved, God, I loved the acting in the scene where she shows up at her birth father, her biological father's house. Oh, yeah. And he has a family. He's out of prison. He has a family. It's kind of hinted that his family doesn't know about his past at all. Um, and so I went and Googled Steve. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm totally kidding. But so she's in there and just how she kind of starts to like divulge who she is and she has the power. And just when she mentioned that name, his demeanor like he didn't even have to say anything. The demeanor, the demeanor when people were coming in and they're like, Hey, let's go have burgers. He's like, yeah, if you just give us a moment. It just, I just thought everything was so realistic on how people would respond. And yeah. I loved this scene with her biological father. I did too. I, I mean, it really, the acting in the entire movie is really great, but they, this mm -hmm. is a standout cast. I feel like, especially with Hunter and Lue, even though he, his is a small part, I really liked him. And mm -hmm. then, um, Dennis O'Hare is incredible who played her yes. father. He has been in like every season of American Horror Story ever made. And I feel like he's always just incredible. His range is insane. If you haven't watched like seasons of American Horror Story, just look up like scenes with Dennis O'Hare. You're going to be like, Jesus, what the hell is this guy? Like, it's insane. This guy's range. He's in, he was so good. And then his wife... um, I don't know her name, but she's a great actress too. Like she just a great, great cast. Yeah. I recognized her from, um, is it I Dexter. Yeah. From Dexter. She was the okay. police chief in Dexter. Yes. That's who I read. I recognized, um, her from, and she is, I'll just tell you her name. Cause I have it right here. Um, Lauren Velez. Okay. Lauren Bellas. Yeah. yeah, she was Lucy, the wife, and I remembered her from Dexter as the police chief. <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> yeah, that whole that whole interaction. And I agree with you. The acting from everybody was good. Even her husband, like he could be so soft and loving and yeah. then just switch on a dime. And it was very realistic. Yeah, you know, I kind of when when movies like this have somebody like this. I don't like it when it's too over the top because it's like we're mm -hmm. obviously painting this person out to be a like classical villain. And I will say this is one of the movies that I think did the best job of making him seem like not just a. How do I phrase this? Like he's not just like a walking robot meant to say terrible guy. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he feels like a person who you know, flips on a switch more so than I would say other movies. I still don't know if it was like a hundred percent like that for me. Cause I was like, there were moments where I was like, okay, we get it. <laughs> you know, like we get it. He's terrible, but he, he felt like, okay, I could see why you would love this guy. You know, why you would want to stay in a relationship with him. He seems like he's really nice one minute. And then he turns around and he's like, don't ruin my fucking birthday. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause he's not like hurting her. Like it's not, obvious like he's not beating her up or anything like right yeah there's the it's emotional not physical abuse abuse yeah it's this and it's yeah when oh my god how beautiful was that the whole the whole movie had great acting but when she found out like everybody in that room knew what she did and, and it gets so quiet prick. he's like gaslighting I, her the whole time yeah for sure such and such a prick and then he's like i needed support <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, I I actually think that is this is one of those moments where it's like that's not a bad reason, right? It's not a bad reason to go and ha like tell your best friend. It is a bad reason to go tell your entire fucking office. You know, there was so many people in that party. Yeah, <laughs> they it's all like, had to know. <laughs> it's like everybody he knows. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you can go tell your, you know, best friend, your brother, a couple of your friends to talk to them about it but also what the fuck about my support you know what i mean like jesus yes. christ what it just was like they so did not care about her and that was frustrating as a viewer but like it's obviously the point but it's like even sorry i'm like changing the subject a little bit but one of the things that was i think illustrated very well was how 
they did not, they seemed to really only care about her because she was pregnant with his child. Like yeah. every time they interacted, I was like, you don't give a fuck about this lady. Like you, it, it, like they just care about the baby inside of her, which is an important aspect of this, but fuck you. Like she's just this vessel to them to like mm-hmm. birth this offspring, you know, that's going to run that company. Yes. For their legacy generations mm-hmm. moving forward i just was like ugh that the yeah just ugh it's, it, that whole relationship with richie richie can't handle this and his parents and the coddling yeah. and you know because there were some moments um where like when he was in the hospital and you can tell he was struggling with the embarrassment that he was to his father for choosing this woman to be his wife, you know, and like the pressure for that. And so it did get me for a second when she called him, when she escaped to the hotel room and he was like, he got out of the car and he's like, look, I love you. And I thought, okay, maybe he's coming around. It did get me for a half a second. Like he didn't want his dad to hear. He realizes the pressure for everything. He wants to go back when he first met her, when there was something there. And it, I, I bought it. And then she was like, I can't do that right now. And then he's like, you fucking C-U-N-T. And just like leaned into her. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's such an asshole. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, he just immediately flips. He's like, I'm going to fucking hunt you down basically. And it's like, whoa, he had my ass too. I was like, oh, he does want to go back. Okay. It's the pressure of this job, you know, like (laughs) his parents. Yeah. He just wants to like, please everybody also, you know, and I got my ass. This is what I feel like they did well. Like he feels like a real person, not just a cartoon villain, you know? Yes. Even though he's obviously terrible. The subtle acting by Hunter or Haley Bennett was so beautiful. Like those little things that just hit your heart. For example, when the mom, the mother-in-law came over and gave her that book and then she's like, Oh, can you stay for, lunch I'll, I'll make you lunch and she's like oh no i can make something else because she's so lonely and yeah. it, it what an interesting thing that house is gorgeous right anybody or i mean it's kind of weird but it, a lot of people would be like oh wow i'd love to live in that house be able to decorate it however i want overlooking the river like this is beautiful i couldn't think of anywhere i'd never want to be the way they portrayed it just it's yeah. almost like a tomb right? She's so bored. She's playing like just this candy crush game for hours and like what preparing her husband's food. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. It just feels like cold and empty. And you know, when she's like watching the movie uh, or she's, what is she? She's watching the thing about, uh, drying your placenta and eating that. Right. That's yeah. which who knows? Like, I think that's a separate thing to talk about, but you know, it's like dark. And she's just alone. It's yeah. Tomb is a good word. Yeah. What did you make of the friend slash coworker guy who came in and asked her for a hug? I was and just she- going to ask you that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I actually, I don't know how I feel about it and I don't know what to, I don't know how to read it, but then she catches him later at another, at the later party in the movie, asking someone else for a hug the same way. I just, I was like, not sure. So at first I thought he's a creep and he just wants to feel her body against his. And I do think that that's, I do think that that's what he's doing because he did it again at that, at that uh, party and said it the exact same way. Can I have a hug? I'm lonely. I think he wants to feel the woman's body up against his. Um. But that moment, I think, where she actually had someone hug her and then she said, thank you, because oh, that yeah. was something that she needed. So she had the the same response probably we all would like, who the fuck, what? Yeah, she goes, but why? Then, <laughs> then she's like, okay, fine, come in. And then I think she realized, God, how much she longs for that. Yeah. But then he did it again. And so it was just like you have no connection. Like even this guy who's fake and like, I want to make a connection with you. You're pretty. I want, you know, I want to kiss you, but I know you won't let me. So can we hug? He's doing that to women all over the place. She literally is fucking no one. 
Yeah. Okay. So it's like to further reinforce, like you have That's no lifeline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's not even that hope of maybe you met this guy and maybe he's your soulmate. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, like, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this guy's going to come to the rescue later or something. I thought that like, maybe he'll be like, oh shit, this is fucked. Let's get you out of here. Yeah. I thought that too. Hmm. Yeah. But nope. He's just a perv. <laughs> just a perv. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Lue who comes to the rescue. Lue, yeah. I, I literally have a blank. I didn't take any notes. I just watched mm-hmm. for this one. I just watched it. I didn't take many notes, and I think I've gone through all of them. Yeah. I don't know what else <laughs> to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was. you. Got, if you want to see a drama, it, I think it going into it that way i did also go into it it was going to be a horror psychological thriller um and to me it was just purely a drama i thought it was a good story i liked the ending i like that she took her life back Um, yeah i was just about to ask even though you cried how did you feel about the ending in general i i really liked it i know that you know i feel like gosh I feel like in this movie, in this context, the abortion for her was like really the only way to go in, you know, not ever having to be a part of those people's lives again, ever. Yeah. Because they were going to keep hunting her, right? And And they have so much fucking like resources too. Like they're so rich. They can just... Yeah, she's like at their fucking mercy. Sorry, keep going though. No, yeah, no. I'm glad you brought that up because as soon as she signed that she should be um, admitted into a mental hospital. I thought she's going to have the baby. They're going to go and they're going to leave her there. She's lost all competency to be a mom. There's like, it's going to be so easy for them to take full custody of that baby from yeah. her. Like you said, just a vessel to birth the baby at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he's going to divorce her, if she doesn't go into a mental institution, he's going to divorce her period. Right. They're already planning. Yeah. this. Yeah. But, um, And then, yeah. And then she was there and she, I feel like she got that closure from whatever was going on with her as far as identity of who she is. And is she a bad person because of her biological father and all that? I feel like she got that closure and she made the decisions and now she's moving on with her life completely um, free of all, you can still see that she's alone but she's free of all of those toxic ties that she yeah. was a part of before. It seemed like she was stepping into her own power and she was going to, you know, move forward, creating her own life. So I really liked it. I agree. I thought it was a, definitely an optimistic ending yeah. that I did not see coming. Like, again, yeah, I right? thought this was going to be like weird <laughs> and dark and terrible. And it ended up being like, oh, shit. OK, she fucking takes control of her life, basically. Bye. Yeah doing this by having an abortion she takes back control and she's able to live the life that she wants you know so you see her the moment too that you see her in that food court when she's finally like changed clothes like she has like a sweater on and her hair is like pulled back in a ponytail i felt like i could see her for the first time with clarity like i felt like i could actually see her you know And I I don't know how they accomplished that that's such a weird vague thing to say and maybe you can only experience that by watching it But I feel like she emerged, you know, here she is as a person. She's been hiding. She's been this like shell of herself up until now. And now she's ready to move forward. And she just did it. You know, even though she didn't have any money or resources, she even her parents are like out of the picture at this point because they can't, they don't want her to come over or whatever, you know, like they don't have room for her. So she's like, you know what, I'm going to go do it on my own then. I was like, this is fucking great. I just didn't expect it to feel good at the end of this movie, but here we are. <laughs> I love, I think you said that so beautifully and I totally agree. I didn't even fully think of it that way, but you do. That's the first time you see Hunter. Mm-hmm. She's not this shell of who they want her to be trying to be this person and, and, and you'll know, be perfect. This is who she is fully. Yeah. You see that. And they don't even, you don't even say anything. It's just all within how she's acting, how she's dressed, how yeah. she's behaving really, really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was very optimistic too. I cried just because it was emotional feeling. It was like, just felt a lot of emotions for it, but it was like, I was happy. I was happy. With yeah. How it turned out. 
Yeah. Um, what what was your read? Because I think I have an, uh, a theory on the end because we had a Silence of the Lambs super long <laughs> shot at the end of this movie where <laughs> after she leaves the bathroom, it just stays on that as the whole entire credits roll and uh, people come in and out of the bathroom. What, how did you feel about this? I really was watching it to see what do I feel about this and what they're saying about women, what they're saying about life. I wasn't sure. So I want to hear what you, I do feel like they were trying to say something. Staying within this bathroom with all these different women of all different types, you know, coming in and out, fixing themselves up, dressed differently. What do you think it meant? I th- th- I don't know. This is just my initial read on it. But I felt like that what they were saying basically was because we just follow this person through this entire like heavy story and then she like you know gets her closer go closure, takes control of her life and leaves and we are left in the bathroom watching all of these women like you said come and go. And it made me feel like they were what they were trying to illustrate was so many people deal with things like this and it could be anybody in your life, any woman, any of these women coming in and out of the bathroom. Like you just have no idea who around you has dealt with something like this and you wouldn't know. You can't know by just looking at them, you know, like she like literally just had an abortion in the stall, left the stall and you would never be the wiser. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea who is experiencing this type of trauma or these types of, um, issues or struggles. Yeah. That is excellent. I like that. Could be anybody, but yeah, I, I, I think so too. Cause I was really trying to, it's like, okay, she had that traumatic event in the bathroom, emerged from the bathroom. There's all these women, all these I think that makes sense. Unless somebody else has a different idea, we'd love to hear it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You don't know who it is, the, what these lived experiences are for all these different women. Coming and yeah. Going. And I just think there's so much to um, identify with, I think, in this character, like in so many different ways. I think especially as a woman, right? That I think there's, you know, being treated as a vessel for a child. I think there's stuff about healthcare and I think there's stuff about mental health and the um, sort of not taking that seriously or just trying to treat the symptoms and not the root cause. And like, there was so much that I felt like was just being trapped. Yeah. Being sure. trapped in a relationship or just people pleasing and trying to, you know, get Be by. A trophy wolf and- yeah. Just, there was so much to identify with and empathize, yeah, and even empathize a- with. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, no. You got <laughs> even just what you said. Yeah. Even the um, uh, whole idea of what a lot of people struggle with and, and whatever situation they're in, I should be grateful. I'm very lucky yeah. that I'm not selling, you know, retail anymore and that I'm here and he takes care of me. How lucky you met my son. Look at everything I have. What's how, how do I have the right to be sad and depressed and lonely when I have all of this, all of this money, all of this, everything that a lot of people don't have. And um, yeah, I think they, they displayed that very well though, that that, that doesn't matter. Yeah. When you're in and pain, it's just, when you're, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. Nope. When you're in pain. Yeah. When you're struggling emotionally, it doesn't matter. That's stuff. And, and again, so many people deal with this on different levels mm-hmm. and different types of ways. And it's just, you know, present basically. Yeah. Because even that boy, even the, her husband was dealing with it on a level of his own with a pressure from his family. Yeah. Um, he just, he was kind of really, you know, uh, you know, apple doesn't fall from far from the tree <laughs> yeah. sort of guy, right? He wasn't really trying to work through those emotions, but definitely a lot of presence from his his father expectations. The mom even was like, you fake it till you make it. So yes. she's it almost seemed like she faked it until she's found her her niche now, right? She does probably her own things. She does this. She's now made herself a part of this so that she can uh, partake and benefit from the wealth and and whatever else that being married to this man brings her. Yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah. 
it was like a meaty movie, but definitely not a pretentious movie. And I liked that. Yeah. I'm so yeah. glad I'm not having any more babies because now I'm scared. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved my fear to you. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have any? I don't have anything else. Do you have anything well, else? Nope. I don't. Dude, Tawny is happy because she gets to edit this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, are you ready to rate the movie? I'm going to give this movie a four out of five. Nice. I really, really fucking liked it. And even though it's not like maybe a horror movie, like I definitely think that we could argue it's it is very light on the horror. It's probably the least horror movie that we've reviewed and talked about. But I think there was some elements of, you know, like I said, tension and anxiety and stuff that i feel when i watch other horror movies but overall i just really fucking liked it i i really enjoyed it as a movie what nice. about you i was exactly dead on a four as well <laughs> i was like i feel real confident about this four <laughs> so I felt good <laughs> same thing um i you know people make me like oh yeah it's a horror movie i didn't feel it it, it may be, but for me, it was not. Um, but it was it was really good. I had a very big emotional reaction to it, which is all I could ask for. I like being yeah. moved emotionally when I'm watching something. The Not the emotion board. So, but, <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. or anger, I guess, depending. <laughs> um, yeah. So four out of five for both of us. Nice. That was a winner for us. I feel like that movie was... Uh right up our alley <laughs> in terms yeah. of themes and yeah it just took a it just took a turn i was it was refreshing it was ref I, you know what i thought that i'm actually kind of happy it wasn't the body gore i was expecting it to be me too I got a little bit of a break from that yes i think uh <laughs> it's been we've done a couple of those you know just coming out of our new french extremity shit it's like nice to you know just go in a little bit of a different direction it made me think today i was like what do i want to watch next like you know because we kind of talk about our themes and stuff and i was like i want to go like opposite end of the spectrum but i don't know exactly even what that would be like just pure i don't know like gore slashy type stuff i know that's still gory but it's like not as uncomfortable as body yeah. horror like you know it's just the feeling of watching it is like different maybe paranormal type stuff oh yeah maybe wouldn't be gore yeah. really yeah because i yeah it's like just a some different nice type scares. of yeah some classic some, scares yeah, just some classic <laughs> scares please <laughs> because i, I was reading this article and they're like this movie um swallow wasn't as bad as this movie and they named a movie. I don't remember what it was. And it named some of the stuff that is in the movie. And I was like, Oh, the one thing that, that clicked. I mean, that I remembered was it said all of these things. And it said tampon swapping. And I was like, okay, I'm not fucking watching this movie right now. I don't even know. <laughs> and then it had another movie. It was like, and it wasn't as gross as this movie. I'm like, okay, both movies. <laughs> I'm going to make sure right now we're, we're just yeah. kind of cleansing, cleansing our aura <laughs> for a minute of this. Yeah, I just don't think I can take any more uh, extreme tension. You know, like I don't, yeah. I cannot sit here and watch people do something that I don't want them to do. This is, yeah. this is the thing that I want to get really far away from for a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I do too. So I'm glad we're on the same page. I feel the same yeah. way. Yeah. All right, everybody, you can find us on our hubs. Our two main hubs would be Instagram at two chicks and a horror flick or two chicks and a horror flick dot com. Uh, our website has links to everything, all the different social media profiles. Uh, if you want to buy merch um, and if you want to join our discord server, which we absolutely love chatting with people in there. And what else, Tani? So our next movie is oh, our I patron pick. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> That's right. Uh, aside from that, you can support the show by going to our Patreon that I just mentioned. And you can also give us a like, review, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us. That helps us a lot get seen, get pushed up the list. But that's all. So I hope you enjoyed this very short episode of our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and we hope you have such a good night. No nightmares. <laughs> <laughs>